They're all the overall movement in whole. So, what's really happened with Bitcoin since we, you know, last chat yesterday? Today's the third. Um, on December second, you know, we did talk about how it might start making lower highs, um, lower lows soon. But until we start breaking this this low right here at, you know, sixteen seven, um, you know, we really can't expect some downside. Just like you know, we really can't expect any upside until we start, you know, somewhat making higher highs, which we. We're actually starting to do a little bit you know we made this higher high a little bit after last night's stream now overall looking at this structure this looks quite bullish okay there's a t something i want to talk about though because this is a nice symmetrical triangle here right this is a very nice symmetrical triangle here However, there's something to think about here is if this is a real symmetrical triangle because sometimes it looks like a symmetrical triangle or sometimes it might look like a certain shape. Remember, we don't just trade shapes blindly. We, we're much smarter than that. We're above just blindly applying shapes and then, you know, throwing our money in, right? That's not how, you know, the real world works. So if we look at this, you know, do we think this is a symmetrical triangle? You know, or any other. So, what does it mean to be in a, in a pattern? Um, you know, let's say you have like a um, like a falling wedge pattern, okay? Like this, right? Price comes from up here. So, what happens in these patterns is that you overall have movement within these lines. It doesn't have to touch the lines because sometimes you can go like this, right? Okay. What we should overall see is this kind of narrowing and consolidation here okay so let me draw it again so okay let me draw this one white so this is what you should see okay the so let's say yellow is the price action here okay yellow is the price action here and what you should really have is an overall consolidation of price within this it doesn't have to be exactly touching the top and bottom every time we should have an overall consolidation with, of the price kind of narrowing inside of this. And that's what really defines a pattern. However, you know, that's what we, you know, we don't just look blindly for patterns because we can see when they don't play out, you know. So, you know, if I didn't know any better, I would say this is a symmetrical triangle. We're going to the moon. You know, we're going to explode out here, you know, go to 800K by January, right? But we're not like that. So we're a little bit smarter. So does it look like price is generally consolidating in here? It kind of does, actually. I know I just gave that long talk about, you know, you can't just believe it's a symmetrical triangle. But this does, if you ignore this part over here, this does look like price is kind of narrowing, right? See, like price is up here, price is down here, price is up, price is down, price is up. See, it kind of looks like price is narrowing here, right? Okay. So if you look at my yellow line and ignore the actual price action below it, you can see that price is kind of consolidating in here, right? So what happens when we have price consolidation is that generally these are uh, continuation patterns to the upside. So this is very interesting to be, you know, a bullish play out here. Now, what we can do though is we can look, well, A, we don't need it to break outside of this, this triangle to invalidate it because, you know, you can get times where, you know, price action doesn't exactly reach the tops and the bottoms, but it still is overall price consolidation inside these, you know, inside this area for the most part. So what we should do is try to find an old symmetrical triangle and see if we can match up the channels, right? And... You know, that's really tough to do um, in this sense, um, especially to the upside because we haven't had much upside, um, you know, for quite a while, actually, <laughs> especially on this time frame, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't think we're going to find anything like that, especially for this coin. I mean, I can tell you on many other coins where it's happened, though, right off the top of my head, and we can pull them up on the chart. 
but in this case probably not for this not probably not for uh, dipcoin so anyway back to our current price here so you know we need to keep an eye on this and see is it going to continue to kind of consolidate and you know narrow here um into this range and if so you know, if we see price get very narrow here you know we might have a squeeze to the upside here right now what would make this kind of invalid is if we started making any kind of lower lows um, or higher highs right so you know if we do start making you know like say we make a low now or we come back up and we test this trend line here um, if we break below you know 16.8 you know I really don't think that you know we're going up if we break below 16.8 I find it very hard to go up um, not that it invalidates this symmetrical triangle in any way but you know what we have for higher highs are just these right here right here and right here okay so this is like what we're basing this on are these three higher highs um, but you know if we come down and we make a lower high or lower low here so I think I was saying lows right so if we have these higher lows here but if we come down and we make a um, a lower low here relative to over here then you know, I really don't think this is gonna play out to the upside so you know um, that's that's overall how I see the market right now is that we might be in the middle of developing something very bullish here um, and keep an eye on this you know um, I'm still you know approaching it the same way as I did in the previous video where I'm looking for good entries at good levels so in this case um, where we're at currently for Bitcoin um, you know I'd be looking for a good short up here somewhere where there's a lower high compared to you know 17.1 so in that case it could be uh, sorry 17.146 right 17.15 so it looks like we already wicked up here and we already touched this, you know, 1705. But if we do come up, um, you know, maybe look for a short 171. There's really not much because price is kind of consolidating right here. So, you know, at the time being, I'm, I'm really just kind of watching, to be honest. There's nothing that really stands out as a very, very key level here. Unless you're looking up here at like, you know, I mean here, if you look at 17.4, this would be a higher high in the short term. But again maybe a lower high in the long term right it's kind of tough to say um there's really no key levels here that really stand out um, for bitcoin or eth um, so at this time because we have this consolidation and, and we don't really know what's going to happen um you know for sure and i don't think anyone else does either um you know I, I wouldn't be rushing in to put my money in um at a high leverage okay um however i am more prone to shorting mainly due to how the volume looks and we're going to take a look at it but then also because we've been making you know lower highs going on for almost a year now so you know we could see some brief upside here after all this but you know i would expect this to kind of more or less you know it kind of looks like price is consolidating in this direction too right right and that would be more like a rising wedge formation here so one rising wedge into another rising wedge and you know that could happen so you know it depends on what time frame you're looking at on these longer time frames it does look like more of a rising wedge formation but on the shorter time frames you know maybe we get a touch up here to the top of this trend line before we dump you know maybe 17.4 you know i still think 17.4 is a is a good level to short at it is a you know higher high in the shorter term but we haven't been up in this area since november 11th which is you know nearly a month ago right so again i'm not rushing into any kind of you know longs or shorts right now unless you're doing anything like a 3x maybe if you have really bad fomo instead you know you could even have a short waiting for you at 17.4 or have a long waiting for you at um you know somewhere right here at like 16.8 you know 16.8 wouldn't be bad right at this pivot right here um you know where you could maybe be barely making a higher low initially so, you know, even you could even put both these in, have a long 16.8, have a short ready for you at, you know, 17.4 up in this area. But, you know, again, there's times to take trades because they're very obvious. And there's times where it doesn't look so obvious and it could go either way. So, 
you know, sometimes it's just better to be safe um, and wait for something to play out. But that's how I would approach it with those two levels. Now, if we go to the volume, let's take a look at what's going on under the hood here. This looks pretty good, you know. It looks okay. It doesn't look amazing. But if we look at what's been happening since yesterday. So yesterday we were up in this area up here. And we talked about the, you know, the delta, the volume not looking great, right? When we were up here. And overall the trend was kind of going down. And right after that we did. We had a dump, right? Because that's what we saw. You know, we saw the delta was overall, you know, volume was going down. And we had a dump today, right? Actually, last night, I think right after the stream, we had a dump. You know, which is pretty obvious. You know, we could see, anyone could see that. You know, the volume was kind of going off. And what's happened since then is that it's in this area right here. Okay. So I want you to focus on these two lines here that I'm going to circle. Okay. So these two lines right here. Okay. So what do we see with these two lines? Well, this green line are this green line is essentially retail buyers and anyone who's buying under 100k is going to be this green line here this orange line are going to be your whales anyone who's buying with larger sums over 100k you know a million 10 million and you can see from back here that previously our whales were doing okay they weren't instantly selling off or anything like that but our retail really lost belief um, and this upside here, retail really sold. And it wasn't until, you know, the whales, you know, kind of maybe saw this or whatever, but then they also started to dump gradually. And then we had this fall off here. Okay. Now, since then, we've seen that the whales are kind of getting out. All right. This orange line down here, you know, whales are, are gradually kind of decreasing supply up until we hit this bottom right here. Oh, got to sneeze. Hold on. Sorry, I got to sneeze. All right. So now what's happened since then? Since we hit this bottom here, and when again, we made a higher low, it looks like this has given retail and whales um, a bit more confidence in buying and we can see that this volume is steadily rising here right this is actually looking very good this volume from you know retail it has positive divergence on it it looks like the volume is steadily increasing here it looks like it might make um, positive divergence here now the whales looks like they're slowly getting some confidence back in it into it as well and they're not really selling off as much anymore now if we look at our longs and shorts and our open interests here so our blue line down here might be tough to see with all this going on. Let me hide some lines here. So our blue line is our open interest, which is essentially the amount of contracts that are open on perpetuals. It could be long or shorts. And we see that it's kind of bottomed out here. You know, when everyone sold off here. But then we had this huge spike up down here when we made this higher low. And it looks like people were starting to open up more longs here um, quite rapidly. A little bit of a sell-off here, but it looks like open interest is ready to, you know, really go up to the upside here. Now, this yellow line are the top traders on Binance, if they're going long or short. And, you know, they don't really look that convinced yet, honestly. Usually, they're kind of front-running a lot of times, but they really don't look that uh, interested in any of this stuff. I mean, if you look back here at the, at the yellow line... Um, before we had all this upside over here. So down here you can see that the top traders in Binance really believed in this, right? They, you know, were going more long on it all the way up to here. But since then, they've just really not believed in this at all. And have just kind of, you know, sold off. So it looks like the overall market is kind of believing in this. However, the top traders in Binance are not really believing this. Which is a little bit concerning um, to say. However, overall, the delta looks really good. Volume is going up. Whales, looks like whales are also starting to buy. Retail is starting to buy. Um, open interest is starting to go up. And maybe we'll see the top traders on Binance start to believe in it too. Um, but right now, they're not really, not too fond of this at the time being. 
I think that's it for Bitcoin, right? Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Congrats. Most people finish early, but you made it the full distance. That's awesome. If you're looking to learn how to trade crypto, check out one of these other videos.